So you're considering making the move to Utah, whether that's for a change of scenery, perhaps a job change, or maybe you're just looking for a different lifestyle. And let's be honest, the outdoors here are a phenomenal attraction as well. We have the most beautiful scenery right here in our backyard. But ultimately, whatever the reason is for your move here to the great state of Utah, you'll read and find a lot of things online that are both true and false. And so maybe you're left really wondering, where's the best place for you to land? Where's the best neighborhood? Where's the best city? and you're only confused after reading everything that you've read online, well, that's why you're here. So today I'm going back through all of my comments on all of my videos over the course of two years, and I'm reading all of those different questions that people have asked me as I've helped so many people make the move here to Utah, and I'm reading through those questions to find out and discover what are the top questions that continually get asked each and every day right here on my YouTube channel. And I'm putting all of the answers to these questions right here in one video, packaging it as an ultimate guide to making the move to Utah. And the top objective for me right here on my channel is to answer your specific questions. That will always be the case. So if you have specific questions, drop them in the comments below because that's precisely where I get my content ideas from to make sure that I'm serving people at the highest level possible. All right, so the number one question that I get asked over and over and over again is where is the best place to live in Utah? And of course, that is subjective. That is based on your particular situation. It's based on your lifestyle. It's based on your work. Do you work at a company? Do you work from home? What's your situation with your family? And all of these things do come into play to determine where might be the best landing place for you. But also there's more. Do you enjoy the outdoors? Do you love skiing? Because that's a huge thing here in Utah as well. But also, do you need to travel? Do you like to travel? Do you travel often for business or for pleasure? Those things are really crucial so that your proximity to the airport is ideal and helps you so that you can find the perfect living situation for you and your lifestyle. But one of the biggest things that come into play for finding the best place for you, of course, is coming down to pricing. Where are the different price points for the different neighborhoods, the different style of homes? The different things that you're going to experience might be very different from one neighborhood to another, and that will absolutely come into play as well. But first, let's talk about housing affordability. It is an absolute crisis in many states, but especially here in Utah, as we've seen these housing prices increase dramatically over the last handful of years. And I wanted to share some of the actual data of what's happening in our marketplace right here in Utah right now. Okay, so currently the median house price along the entire Wasatch Front here in Utah, which includes Utah, Salt Lake, Davis, and Weber counties, is $520,000. But when you remove the townhomes, the condos, and the multifamily units, the median sales price of a single family home has climbed up over $620,000. And like I mentioned before, affordability is the greatest threat to Utah's future. If we don't have housing for our children and our grandchildren to be able to stay here in this beautiful state, what's going to happen to the economy and to the growth of this state. So I wanna make sure that I talk a little bit about housing affordability as I go through more of the statistics. So here's just a little bit of the actual data in real time right now. So for the entire Wasatch Front, we currently have 6,176 listings along the entire Wasatch Front, which includes Salt Lake, Utah, Davis, and Weber counties. And out of those 6,100 listings that are priced under $500,000, only 709 of those are single family homes. So the majority of the homes that are listed under $500,000 are going to be townhomes and condos. Now let's break that down by county. In Salt Lake County, we have a total of 2,400 and 25 listings with 857 of those being priced under $500,000, which is 35% of the current market listings. Moving on to Utah County, we have a total of 2,323 listings with 827 of those being priced under 500, again, 35%. So Utah County and Salt Lake County are almost identical both in the number of listings, but also the percentage of those listings that are priced under $500,000 as a single family home. Moving north from Salt Lake City, we have Davis County. Davis County currently has 614 listings. It's a much smaller county in population. And out of those 614 listings, 219 of those are priced under 500,000. And of course that is again, 35% of the market which is identical to Utah and Salt Lake counties as well. But moving northward into Weber County, that's where we typically see the most affordable areas to live in the state of Utah. 
at least along the Wasatch Front. In Weber County, we currently see a total of 814 listings. 359 of those homes are priced under 500,000, which equates to 44% of the current listings being priced under a half a million as single family homes. Now, as I mentioned before, statewide, our median sales price is right around $510,000 but for single family, it's just over 620,000. So if you're looking for a single family home, that's realistically what you could expect to pay for a median priced home that is a single family home in Utah. And whether it be statewide or along the Wasatch Front, the numbers are almost identical. We do have some outlying rural towns that pull the numbers down, but we also have areas outside of the Wasatch Front, like Park City, like St. George, that help elevate those numbers up again as well. So outside of the Wasatch Front, the numbers are almost identical. So the next thing I wanted to talk about is how many homes are priced under $400,000. In the entire state, we have 1,103 listings right now that are priced under $400,000. And of those 1,103 listings, only 178 of those are single family homes. So as you can see, if you're pricing under $400,000, you're almost guaranteed to not find a single family home. And if you do, those homes are going to be very, very small and probably need a lot of work. So you might be asking, what are the most affordable areas near Salt Lake City? I would say it's Weber County to the north, Tooele County to the west, and then on the west side of Utah County, west of the mountain, you can see in Eagle Mountain, there's a lot of good affordable properties there as well, which is one of the most booming areas in the state. On the flip side of that, which are the areas where the wealthy people live, right? So we have Park City, we have Alpine and Highland down in Utah County, and we definitely have places throughout Salt Lake City, including Holiday, as well as the East Bench or the avenues up in Salt Lake City and Federal Heights, perhaps. And there's other neighborhoods up north as well where you're going to find a lot of high-end properties. Another really good place for high-end properties is going to be St. George, which of course offers a completely different lifestyle. So we have a little bit of everything from the affordable to the really expensive properties. So it really breaks down to what is your lifestyle? What is your price that you can actually afford to make that move here to Utah? So ultimately, what's important to you? Do you wanna be in one of these more affordable areas? Or are you looking for something a little more luxurious and you wanna be in one of the higher end communities? It really just breaks down to what you can afford. We are here to help you understand where you might wanna live based on your preferences, your lifestyle, your job, and everything in between. So reach out to us. You can find our information down below. Let's have a conversation and help dial those answers in specifically for you. And honestly, my absolute favorite thing to do right here on my YouTube channel is to interact with people just like you and actually serve you and help you find those different areas. I do a lot of YouTube videos where I don't make them public. They're videos that are just between me and a client, just making sure that I'm giving you proper guidance and showing you exactly what it is you're looking to find out. All right, my number two most frequently asked question is what are the pros and cons to each of the different neighborhoods? As people are looking to make the move here, they not only wanna research what are the best areas to live in, but they want to know what are the pros and cons of each of those neighborhoods. Is the neighborhood an HOA? Is it a master planned community? Or is it more established and maybe with some older homes? All of these things come into play and based on your preferences, you're gonna to want to know where to look for certain features in a neighborhood. But beyond that, you wanna know what is the proximity to the city, the events, the airport, the outdoors, the restaurants, the fine dining. And another really big one is people wanna know where is the nearest Whole Foods or Trader Joe's? Where's the nearest this or that? It depends on what you're into. So that's something we can do and help dial in specific to what you're looking for as well. And as I have these conversations every single day, some people are thinking, okay, is it Salt Lake City or Provo? Do I wanna live in Highland or Mapleton or perhaps South Jordan or Sandy? It just depends. And so helping have that personalized guidance along the way to help find and discover what might be best for you, that's something that I take very seriously and I absolutely love doing it. And when you're talking about the different pros and cons of each area, I always like to bring up with people that depending on the proximity to the mountains, it will dictate not only the age of the neighborhoods typically, because the older homes are typically built closer to the mountains, but it will also dictate the price. Usually you pay a little bit more money to be closer to the mountains. But on the flip side of that, if you're a little further away from those mountains, you get better views of those mountains. So it's kind of a juxtaposition between, do I wanna be really close or do I wanna be 10 minutes away and have a better view of those, of those same mountains? All right, my number three most frequently asked question is, should I consider new construction or should I buy an existing home? Now, from April of 2023 to April of 2024, or new construction in Utah is up 32.8%. In fact, there's not a single state in the entire nation that builds more homes per 1,000 residents than we do here in Utah. So Utah leads the nation in new construction at 11.7 units per 1,000 residents, 
with Idaho coming in second place, followed by Florida in third place. And last year alone, Utah added 30,381 housing units, and it is absolutely not keeping up with current demand. We still are under building. In fact, there's only been one year since 2008 that we've actually built enough homes. But every year, other than that one year, we've built too few homes based on current demand. Another data point that I found incredibly interesting is almost 25% of all homes that are being sold right now in Utah are new construction. And even though new construction went through a phase during the pandemic that was terrible, the supply chains were broken, you couldn't get certain materials and certain design ideas just couldn't be implemented because we could not get those products and those things that we wanted to in order to build those homes, new construction has leveled out. It's more normalized now, of course, but it's definitely a very appealing option for so many people and rightfully so. Typically with new construction, you're going to get a nicer home based on what you get for the money. If you're spending $650,000 for an older home that needs a lot of work with an old roof, with an old HVAC system, with an old foundation, whereas with a new home, you're paying that same price for something that's brand new that you likely won't have to really worry about for many, many years with all of those expensive components that make up a house. And of course, there are pros and cons with new construction. You have the element of the unknown. You have all the different negatives that come with it as well. And just like anything else, there are so many pros and cons when buying new construction. Ultimately, there are a lot of unknowns with new construction. There are pros and cons and everything in between. But with my previous experience in both building and renovating homes, it really comes into play and it serves my clients incredibly well. So here on my team, we are new construction specialists. We've developed relationships, not only with the local builders, but also the regional and the national builders here as well. We know the neighborhoods, we know the developments, we know the pros and cons of each one of those, and we can really help dial you in if you are looking for new construction. So reach out to us if you're looking for new construction. We'd love to serve you and be of help as well. You can find our information down below. But also, if this is the type of content that really helps you, I would absolutely love it if you hit that subscribe button. It means the world to me because it shows me that people are actually watching it and making sure that I can answer your specific questions. So if you like this type of content and it's helping you, please consider hitting that subscribe button. And moving on to the number four most asked question that I get here on my channel, it has to do with jobs and opportunities. Utah is ranked as the number one state for unemployment. It's also ranked as the number one state overall. And the overall job market here is incredibly strong. The economy is strong. The job market is strong. There are certain elements of it that are perhaps a negative. For example, if you're working a wage earning type of job, you're probably gonna have a difficult time keeping up with the housing costs that have gotten so expensive. But on the flip side, if you're working in a mid-level or an upper level management type position, you're gonna find that it's a really great place. But in addition to that, if you're self-employed or if you have a side hustle, Utah is probably one of the best states in the entire country. We are entrepreneur minded here. So if you have that bone in you to really start your own side hustle or your own business, the business friendly environment here will help make that a possibility that if you're in other states, could be a stark contrast from the state that you're coming from. So Utah is a really business friendly state for small businesses as well. And you'll likely find a great opportunity here if you're looking to start a business as well. All right, number five, most asked question that has to do with schools. Now I'm a real estate agent and I don't know if a lot of people understand this, but real estate agents cannot steer people in one direction or another based on schools, based on a lot of factors. And the quality of schools uses a lot of data points that we just cannot share as real estate agents. However, we can share the resources that you'll need to check on those scores. And some of that comes from the State Board of Education. There are also websites that rank schools as well. So when we're talking about the pros and cons of these different areas, we can certainly help guide you towards resources, even though we can't talk about the exact rankings of these schools per se. But just like anywhere, there are schools that are better than others. So you'll definitely want to do your research and we can really set you up and make sure that you're doing the research in the right place so that you're doing so effectively and efficiently. But overall, when talking about schools, here's something that I can tell you. We have an incredibly robust system here for educating your children. Um, we have really good public schools, private schools, magnet schools, charter schools, private schools, it doesn't matter what you're looking for, there are schools here for you. It's just a matter of dialing into the exact neighborhood 
that really lines up with your core values and what you're looking to accomplish. And it's worth noting that in some of the areas, we have really crowded schools. We have a lot of kids here in Utah, and so some of our schools, especially in certain areas, can be very crowded. So we want to know the different metrics behind what's the pupil to teacher ratio, because that really comes into play in Utah as well. Some areas are much more crowded than others. And just recently, starting teacher salaries here in Utah have been bumped up dramatically to the point where Utah now ranks top 10 in the country for starting salaries for teachers. And I can tell you honestly, this is such a relief. It's really cool to see these awesome people that are school teachers be rewarded for actually doing something that is so incredibly important. And so hopefully this carries out through other teachers pay that are further along in their career and not just starting salaries. But it's really cool to see that we finally are making that improvement. I really like that. All right, number six on the list, it's what is there to do in Utah? Now, this is the easiest question in the world to answer. And if you get bored in Utah, that's your own fault. There are so many things to take advantage of year round, right? It doesn't matter if it's summer, winter, spring, or fall. The outdoors are right here in your backyard. It's the hiking, it's the snowboarding, it's the snowshoeing, it's the snowmobiling, all the winter sports, but then also the summer sports and the mountain biking and just the hiking in general. We have so many fun things happening throughout the state year round from an Oktoberfest up Little Cottonwood Canyon near Snowbird in October. It is absolutely amazing and it's gorgeous. And right here in the summer, in the middle of summer, we have a couple of real estate investors that have put this treasure hunt on for the last handful of years. And so there's a treasure hunt happening right now where people are encouraged to get out of the house go experience the outdoors and go hike these easier trails along the Wasatch Front. And with that, there is a reward of a $25,000 treasure that's hidden up in the mountains. So it looks like this is something that will continue each and every year because these guys are really passionate about it. And so shout out to John and the Klein family because those families that are actually putting this treasure hunt on have gotten and inspired so many local people to get out of their house and go enjoy these beautiful outdoors. Beyond those things to do, I could go on and on and on in terms of the outdoors, the national parks, the Bonneville Salt Flats, you've got Antelope Island close by, there's state parks everywhere. There's so many reservoirs to go skiing or do other activities, but right here in the city, it's really changing as well. There's some really good quality restaurants that have come into Salt Lake City and even into some of the other suburbs as well. But we also have some professional sports teams from the Utah Jazz in the, in the NBA. We also have our professional soccer team in Real Salt Lake. And of course, many people are incredibly excited about our new hockey team, our newest NHL team right here in Utah that will kick off this fall. In fact, I've had numerous people reach out to me that are moving to Utah specifically because they work for the hockey team. So if that's you, I'd love to serve you as well. Reach out to me and we can talk and make sure that we're serving you as well because that NHL season is coming quickly. It starts in October. So we wanna make sure that we're prepared and ready to go and make sure that you're well-situated and you find a place that is perfect for you. In recent months, I created a video of my personal top 50 things to do in Utah. And so if you tried to keep up with that list, you'd have a difficult time knocking out everything on that list in a single year, let alone a handful of years. Most people never get to do all of those things anyway, but you can check out that video on my channel. It's the top 50 things to do in Utah. Okay, question number seven. It's what is the weather really like here? What is it truly like in the summer? What is it really like in the winter? How cold does it get? How hot does it get? And basically, of course, everything is driven by our arid climate. We have a very dry climate here. So when we get the cold temperatures, they don't feel as cold as they would in a more humid environment. And when it comes to the hot temperatures, it doesn't feel quite as hot either. So right now we're sitting in a week that is going to be the hottest week of the year. That's going to be over 100 degrees for numerous days. So when it's 100 degrees here, it's going to be far better than if it's 90 degrees in a really humid place. So it really depends on where you're coming from because we have such a dry climate here. I think it will be an adjustment not only for the weather, but also the dryness in general. It's probably going to be a little bit of an adjustment for you. Another adjustment that you might have to factor in is the altitude. And typically your body will respond over the course of the first two, three, maybe four weeks, and you'll really become acclimated to the higher altitude here. But overall, the winters aren't as bad as most places in the country that experience really snowy winters. And it's not nearly as bad as many of the hotter places that have really hot temperatures. I would say that 90 degrees anywhere in the southern states of the United States is far worse than anything that's over 100 degrees here in Salt Lake City. But if we're looking at the big picture, 
we on average have 222 sunny days per year. That's pretty good. And overall, it typically rains here in the spring. You'll see a lot of rain in April and May, maybe into June at times. But then the summer and the fall remains fairly dry until winter comes back in October, November, December. And that's when we start seeing that snow fly up in the mountains and really start building that snowpack for the next season. And on the topic of weather, we don't have hurricanes here. We almost never get tornadoes. There is the exception of the tornado that hit right in downtown Salt Lake City in the late 1990s that actually killed a couple of people but other than that, we really don't see those natural disasters. We will see some wildfires at times that will take out a couple of homes. But other than that, the natural disaster element doesn't really come into play if you're living in Utah. But the last thing I wanted to talk about with weather, it's my least favorite thing about living in Utah, and that is the winter inversions that can kick in depending on the year and what's happening that year with the weather. So some years aren't so bad, like the last two years have been phenomenal, they've been great, but there are many years before that where sometimes we get those inversions that really kick in and sock in that pollution right here in the valley. And usually those take place in January and February. And those are often the best times to get out of town, go on a week long vacation, to get out of the inversions, but also to go hit the slopes, go up skiing, get up into Park City, go up into one of the mountain towns or valleys because it's typically eight to 10 degrees warmer up there and you're going to have clear skies and clean and fresh airs. And so ultimately with weather, the worst time to be here if you're not into skiing is going to be January and February. But on the flip side, the best time to be here in Utah when the most tourists come here, it is precisely in January and February. They come for the Sundance Film Festival and they come to enjoy the greatest snow on earth. So if you're looking to enjoy four seasons, you're in a great place. This is one of the best places in the country to enjoy all four seasons. I love it. My kids love it. My family loves it. You may or may not, but that's up to you. So there it is. There are the top seven questions that I'm asked by my friends right here in YouTube and the people that have reached out to me as well. And they ask so many more questions when we get on a Zoom call or we meet in person. And so if you have any questions at all, or perhaps you've learned something in this video, drop a comment below, let me know what that is. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please do so. We're putting out videos each and every week, just like this to make sure that we're answering your specific questions to moving to and living in Utah. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Scott Steele and I absolutely love helping people discover all things Utah, including Utah real estate. And I would love nothing more than my team and I to be your real estate resource of choice here in Utah. So get in touch with us and let's get started. And until the next video, thanks.